Let's see how Adobe's podcast AI deals with a vocal that has extreme amounts of natural reverb. Hey, hey, everybody. We're going to test another AI tool in this video. That is Podcast AI by Adobe. And this time, I don't want to only put in my voice while I'm speaking, but I want to see if we can also use it to process vocals for singing and if it can make not great sounding vocals sound usable. I've recorded in a couple of different places in my room here. And as you can see, the ceiling is really high, so it has a lot of reverb. So we're going to see if it can reduce that reverb, if it can reduce some noise and generally if it can work with vocals and not just talking. Let's see. I hope we don't get disappointed here. Okay, so this is the session that I created. First, we were in a closed microphone in the Isovox, which is really supposed to make your room as dead as possible, but it's a small box, so maybe the vocals are going to sound a little bit boxy. So I'm hoping that with this podcast AI, we can improve the quality and make it sound a little bit more natural. For every sound source that I use, I did like one speaking part and singing on two different songs. One is a little bit more upbeat and a little bit higher pitch and more intensity, which might maybe lead especially when I record in the big room to more reverb being picked up and the other one is more calm but maybe we have to like push the microphone a little bit higher which might lead to some noise we're going to try to see how Adobe's AI can handle these things so first setup was the Isovox the second one it was using a Zoom H6 in the middle of the room which has a stereo microphone and it's so it's probably going to pick up a little bit more from the directions rather than this type of microphone the final setup that I did was singing to the Zoom but like two meters away from it in a room with five meter high ceilings so we're going to expect to hear a lot of reverb. Let's see how AI can tackle this issue. A lot of YouTubers have great sounding studios and obviously they have a lot more knowledge than I have in showing you how to treat audio and how to make your home studio sound a little bit better. But recording in a studio that sounds already pretty good is not available to every musician. What I'm trying to do in these videos is kind of simulate how a real like non-treated home studio sound could be made a little bit more professional to be used in your music. I have exported these files into this folder. Let's quickly hear how it sounds before the Isovox test speaking first. In the Isovox, which is a very tight space. Let me turn on this light. Oh, God damn. This is something. Okay. So it sounds decent, I would say, but it does already like in the speaking voice sound a little bit boxy. So let's see what Adobe's podcast AI can do. This is the website. It's still in beta, but we can try it out. Okay. It's going to take some time. Let's see. So this tool is currently mainly made for podcasts. So it enhances talking voices. I'm thinking that it might be able to like help with rap voices, but let's see if it will also help with my like pop type singing vocals. Okay. Let's download this real quick and this right next to the original. As you can see, first of all, like it, it really removed a lot of the handling noise here. That's good. And this is where the vocals the start. The test we're going to do in the Isovox, which is a very tight space. As you can see here, it also made the signal louder. So it also applied some normalization or maybe limiting here. And let's see how it sounds. We're going to have two different audios, the one from my camera and the one from my microphone. Let me turn on this light. Oh, God damn. This is something. OK, so I have a really different room. So that's why I bought this Isovox. To be honest, it doesn't sound bad at all, but it still kind of has that boxy character. But also I feel like it doesn't 100% sound like me. And it's supposed to like remove all the reverb. And it's supposed to like remove all the reverb. It got the same like intonation that I used and how I talked, but it's a little bit different. It's yeah, it's, it's definitely usable for sure. It does have this like crisp quality that we hear in most podcast audio, but because of its tight space, it can sometimes sound a little bit boxy and we're going to see if we can remove this boxiness. Let me quickly test with an EQ curve, like how it looks before. Sure. Let's quickly let them play along next to each other. Audios, the one from my camera and the one from my microphone. Let me turn on this light. Oh, God damn. This is something. Okay, so I have a... I'm a little scared to upload another singing vocals, but that's what we came here for. Isovox test one, singing vocals. It's trying to enhance speech, so let's see if it detects singing as speech or not. I have not given this a test before, and if it doesn't work, it's going to be a really short video here. 
but then we are still going to test how it's going to treat those very reverberant talking. Oh wow, some files can take up to 10 minutes to enhance. So while we are waiting, let's give a listen to how this actually sounds. And I particularly recorded vocals to a backing track because in the end what we want to do is not only hear the vocals in isolation, but want to hear how they're going to sound together with music. So this is how they sound with the test one. <laughs> It's a stripped version of a song that I released some time ago, but... I don't mind if you moved on and you say you want him by your side I don't think that you could ever feel so fine mm -hmm. Sounds super dry, which is why I bought the Icebox and... Okay, okay, it gave me an audio. I'm actually really excited. I did not necessarily expect it to work. Let's see. Me neither. It did remove some handling noise again. Let's test it without the backing track first. First this track. You moved on and you say you want him by your side. You moved on and you say you want him by your side. Not bad, not bad. Let's see how that sounds in a mix. I don't think that you could ever be so fine. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. See, it's, you can hear that it's not necessarily made for singing because it did not recognize my mm -hmm as a vocal and it cut it off handy so you can hear if you're in headphones, you can hear where it's going to start. Mm -hmm. like but apart from that, it did treat the vocals quite nicely. Feel like I am brainwashed My heart's been through so much but yet the pain Having you by my side's worth it Feel like I am brainwashed My heart's been through so much But yet the pain of It does sound really good! Having you by my side's worth it Rain drops I believe in rainbows So I'm brainwashed Says to think it's gonna be alright But Feel like I am brainwashed my heart's been through so much, but yet the pain of not having you by my side's worth the rain drops. I believe in rainbows, so I'm brain. Okay, so obviously this is just a quick demo, but it does sound good. Then again, the Icebox is relatively dead sounding. I feel like it does make it sound a little bit more present, a little bit less boxy. Okay, the second one is done, by the way. Where we are really going to test the limits of this AI is in the next two demos. Let's quickly compare song two, Icebox 2, Enhanced. I was constantly waiting for something to happen, hoping that someday I'd be it does sound tight and boxy. Let's see. I was constantly waiting for something to happen, hoping that someday I'd be more. See, it has some artifacts here and there, and I think it's gating a little bit too strong. I'm hoping that once Adobe Podcast is actually released, we can kind of edit some parameters, because for me, it does gate it a little bit too much. Day I'd be more, more of the person that I see in picture, more of the person that I see in pictures when I wander on. It makes it definitely more present and less boxy. It's kind of impressive that it does work for singing vocals. So far, so good, I would say. Now we set sort of the baseline for how it can sound in a dead room. While I'm talking, let me already upload. Speaking close mic. And let me show you what that sounds like. So the room that I'm living in is, is really large. The ceilings are like... Check, check, check! You can hear the reverb for sure. Let's see how it's going to deal with that while speaking. But I don't think it sounds bad at all. Like if you're close to the microphone, even with directional microphones, like on the Zoom, it still sounds decent. I'm particularly interested in these check, moments. Check, check, check! Where there's a little bit more reverb. Okay, it's done. Check, check, check! You can hear it's further away from the mic. It doesn't sound great. Test! Check, check, check. Okay. Check, check, check. It didn't recognize one of them as a vocal, but... Check, check, check. Wow, this is pretty insane. You can clearly hear. Test. Check, check, check. What's interesting, you turn it into a monophile. We had a stereo voice. Check, 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 check. Where I'm a bit further away from the mic, you can hear the stereo image. And it turned it mono. Test. Check, check, check. It does sound pretty good. I'm very excited to see this one singing now. This is song one again, raw. I don't mind if you moved on and you say you want him by your side. And 
I don't think that you could ever feel so fine. It doesn't sound very reverberant. That makes us to think it's gonna be alright, right? Yeah! 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 But in these notes that I recorded particularly for this reason, you can hear the reverb. Yeah! Even in the mix. You think it's gonna be alright, right? Yeah! Yeah! While this doesn't sound too strong now, I think when you actually edit the vocals and maybe make them a little bit louder, a little bit crisper, you might bring out more of the actual room reverb, which could make the mixing process a little bit harder. Let's see how that sounds now. Just to think it's gonna be alright, right? Yeah! Oh my god! This is pretty good! This is pretty damn good. Let's go. I don't mind. You moved on and you say you want him by your side And I don't think that you could ever feel so fine Ooh. Let's see if it cut this one off again Ooh. Yeah, it, it cuts off everything that it doesn't recognize as speech mine. It does sound a little bit thinner for sure Feel like I am brainwashed My heart's been through so much but yet the pain oh. You but you hear much more of the room here. Raindrops falling on my head make me feel brainwashed. Just to think it's gonna be alright, right? It does yeah. work. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely takes out some of my intensity. Yeah. Oh my god, it kind of turned the scream into speaking, which is a bit weird. Yeah! 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 I would call it a fun vocal effect. Definitely not 100% usable in every moment of your song. But... It's gonna be alright, right? It's gonna be alright. But it's a cool way to make a vocal double as well without singing it again. I, I, I see a lot of potential in this technology. I didn't think this was going to turn out so fun. Let's compare the EQ curves quickly. Not having you by my side's worse than raindrops Falling on my head make me feel brainwashed Cause I still think it's gonna be alright, right? Definitely reduces some of the low end here. That's very, very apparent here. I feel like it does make the vocal sound a bit thinner, but in the context of the mix, this can work. Look, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily always use this in every song or every mix, because it does have some weird artifacts. Considering that it's just recently released, I'm sure it's, it will get better. And maybe once it's actually a real like studio application or maybe even a plugin for your DAW, you might be able to tweak it. But this is already pretty, pretty awesome. Feel like I am rainbushed. My heart's been through so much, but yet the pain of not having you by my side's worse than raindrops Falling on my head make me feel brainwashed Cause I still think it's gonna be alright, right? Yeah! 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 Cause I still think it's gonna I still think it's gonna be alright It's usable! Test to the a little bit quieter song This is how it sounds originally I was constantly waiting for something to happen Hoping that someday I'd be more More of the person that I see in picture More of the person Oh, there's a big Plosive sound, and let's see if it removed that. More of the person that I yes. see in pictures when I wander on my. This is really good. Like, I can see myself using it for certain words. I was constantly waiting for something to happen, hoping that day I'd be more. It does seem to have more problems with slower words. Like, this is clearly more of a ballad, and I was constantly waiting. Waiting for something to happen, hoping that day I'd be more. Somehow it boosted this more very strongly. More of the person that I see in pictures when I wander on memory lane. 
kind of boosts certain words, which I don't necessarily like. I wanna hear yourself, God, what it feels like. Yeah, the gating is too strong in this example. For a song where you're singing a little bit more quietly, this is not ideal, but the processing sounds alright. And now we come to the final test, the most complicated one, and that is the far away microphone. This is how that sounds. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, now we're gonna try it sound a little bit further to see how much reverb we can pick up. Let's go. I don't mind if you moved on and you say you want to buy a side. I don't think that you could ever feel so fine. Yeah! Yeah! Like, I think you can really, really hear the room in here. Let's see if that's gonna work out or not. Now we're gonna try it sound a little bit further to see how much reverb we can pick up. Let's oh my god, this butchered it completely. It might be a little bit confused about how this speaker is supposed to sound like. Now we're gonna try it standing a little bit further. Because for now this did not work out well. Now we're gonna try it standing a little bit further. It definitely does not sound like me anymore. Now we're gonna try it standing a little bit further to see how much reverb we can pick up. So I definitely removed the reverb, but I kind of feel like it synthesized my voice completely new, which I don't really like because this does not sound like myself. So maybe we have found the limit of this technology. Let's see. Now, now we're, we're gonna try it standing a little bit further to see how much reverb, reverb we can pick up. up. Let's go. go. Yeah, the, the EQ curve also looks a little bit different. Being too far away from the mic does seem to be a problem while talking, but let's see how it's gonna deal with my singing. For comparison, this is the original. I don't mind. Super you reverb. You, you can hear the room. I don't think that you could Particularly ever. at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, the reverb does not sound bad at all, but it's just not ideal if you're recording with this because then it's already printed into your track. But I can see myself recording in this environment and actually using the natural reverb. Let's see how Adobe's Podcast AI deals with a vocal that has extreme amounts of natural reverb. Maybe not extreme, but strong amounts of natural reverb on it. I don't mind. You ruled on and you say you want him by your side. And I don't think that you no. could <laughs> ever feel so fine. Like when you were mine. It's just not me anymore. I feel like I am brainwashed. My heart's been through so much, but yet the pain of. Feel like I am brainwashed. My heart's been through so much, but yet the pain of having you back. Let's hear how the very reverb. Yeah, 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 It takes out the intensity of the screams and it completely changed my voice. Like I might be able to use this as a digital backing vocal, but I mean, there are some plugins that sound less robotic than this. I mean, I'm not sure what I expected. It's a tool for podcasting and can't do magic yet, I would say. The final thing that we're gonna try is the song two. Let's hear how it sounds on its own. I was constantly waiting for something to happen up in It just sounds like you're far away from the mic. More of the person that Direction. I see in uh. pictures when I wander on memory lane. But I guess through the years I've got. Please excuse the shit sounding strings. This is just a demo currently. One more try for Adobe's AI to see how it will deal with this. Let's see. I was constantly waiting for something to happen up in that someday I'd be more More of the person that I see in pictures when I wander on memory Honestly, I feel like with this song, it didn't do too bad at all. It kind of changed the pitch here and there, or maybe I just sang off pitch, because it was a really quick demo. But let's see, with just two quick effects. Waiting for something to happen up in that someday I'd be more More of the person that I see in pictures when I wander on memory lane But I guess through the years I forget what it feels like Finally be at peace If I could just stop and just move my 
guess I'm happy. I guess I'm happy. I guess I'm happy. I guess I'm happy. One day I'll be. Guess I'm happy. Okay, in this example, it actually did really, really well. I'm pretty impressed. Like, on its own, it does sound a bit odd. I guess I'm happy. I'm happy. With some pitch correction, with some reverb. I guess I'm happy. It does sound a little bit robotic here and there, for sure. Currently, this technology is not at the place where I would use it on every vocal throughout the whole song, but I could see where you could apply it. Honestly, not bad, not bad. The final thing that I would like to try is to see how it will deal with some artificial noise. There's a lot of Waves plugins that add just a ton of noise. We're gonna use this one. Ooh! So the room that I'm living in is, is okay. really large. The ceilings are like five meters high. So you can imagine how much reverb you're gonna- We get some clicks, we get some noise. Let's export this audio file and see if it can deal with that stuff. I'm gonna test another this thing. It's really large. The ceilings are like five meters high. So you can imagine how much reverb you're gonna get. Even when I'm talking like this, that's why I use the zoom. Let's test two things. Really noisy audio and like really telephony. And we should pick okay. up a lot of reverb and we just give it another chance. Thank you for sticking around this long. This is just, I would say, a kind of an experimental video, but hopefully you learned something interesting from it as well. So this is how much noise was on the file. The room that I'm living in is, is really large. The ceilings are like five, so you can imagine how much reverb. How does the AI deal with that? So the room that I'm living in is, is really large. The ceilings are like five meters high, so you can imagine how much reverb you're gonna Get. It does make my voice sound artificial and not like myself anymore, but it did remove the noise. So if, if all that you want is to get your message across, I guess that's what you can do with this. That's all my room. So didn't reduce all the clicks though. Try not to have this amount of noise. I would say we kind of found the boundary of where it sounds still good. And this is how this audio sounded first with the EQ correction. So the room that I'm living in is, is really large. Okay, let's see how it us with that. So my room, so the room that I'm living in is, is really large. The ceilings are like five meters high. So you can imagine how much reverb you're going to get even when I'm talking. Like Interesting. It, it did synthesize some parts that were not there. This is what I was expecting in my last video when I talked about RX10 synthesizing certain frequencies. And it did the same here. Like all that it got to work with, only this spectrum. This is how the original sounds. And this is what the AI synthesized. So the room that I'm living in is, is really large. The ceilings are like five meters high. So you can imagine how much reverb you're gonna get even when I'm talking like this. That's why I used the zoom and we should pick up a lot of reverb and we want to see if we can reduce that reverb later. It's not too bad at all. So the room that I'm living in is, is really- Okay, let me do one more thing. One final test while I'm at it. Let's just get some strong. So the room that I'm living in is, uh, is it's a bit really too strong. Large. The ceilings are like five meters high, so you can imagine how much reverb you're gonna get. One overdriven version, and then we are done. The final test. The ceilings are like five meters high, so you can imagine how much reverb you're gonna get. So you can imagine how much reverb you're gonna get, even when I'm talking like this. For some reason, it. it did work really well when I was a bit further from the microphone, but obviously it did not remove the distortion. There are some limits to this technology. I would really like to see something where you can actually train it with your voice's samples, with speaking samples, and also with some singing samples of how your voice sounds like, because it definitely uses something to guess how your voice should sound like. But I think if you could train it in a way that makes it more personalized, this technology would be even more awesome. Let's see what's to come in the future. So this kind of concludes our little experiment, I would say. For enhancing what I recorded in the Isovox, it was definitely usable both in singing and in speaking, and it made the vocal a little bit more present, but I'm sure that if you mix it well and use some other like plugins that reduce boxiness, you can do 
the same. I wouldn't really recommend this Adobe Podcast tool for a final release, but if you're just working on a demo and you you had just a certain vocal to work with and you just want to make it sound all right enough to present it to someone relatively fast, I could see myself using this plugin. When it comes to singing into the Zoom close up, it also did a decent job on my talking vocals and on one of the songs, the one that was a little bit faster and a little bit more high energy, but it did reduce some of my voice's presence and it did reduce some screaming intensity. And of course, when you're far away from the microphone and you have a room that's super reverberant, you can't expect too much from the AI yet. But for one of the songs, I was pretty impressed for talking and for the other song, I was, I wouldn't say disappointed because it wasn't anything that I did not expect. Let's just keep it at this. I was impressed for my song Happy because it did enhance the vocals to a point where I would be able to use them, not as a main vocal, but where I would be able to use them as a good enough demo. With that, I want to thank you for watching until here. This is probably a super long video, but it was a lot of fun to create because this is something interesting to test. Adobe Podcast AI gets a thumbs up from me. If this technology keeps improving, we're going to be able to make some really amazing things in the future. Goodbye. And if you watched until here, comment with a capo emoji, if anything similar exists that kind of looks like it. I'll see you in the comments. Goodbye.